In the prestigious Parisian museum Le Petit Palais, the press were on hand to inaugurate a quite extraordinary exhibition. For one year, 15 women from social centers followed dressmaking workshops run by Sakin Msa, a young designer from the Comoro Islands. The exhibition, entitled L'Etoffe des Héroïnes, The Fabric of Heroines, is the result of this intelligent exchange of cultural know-how, personal experiences and collective imagination. Malika Bouhiya is one of the artists whose work is being shown not far from the museum's historical exhibits. The young designer, now enjoying the limelight, worked for months in the Sakina workshops in the Parisian Goutte d'Or area. The principal aim of the Designers' Association is to help these women regain their autonomy and start their careers. I really wanted to work in fashion design and Sakina helped me do that. She gave me a job and I'm extremely happy. A few meters from Malika, Sakina Msa is organizing her busy agenda. The workshop doubles up as the premises of a well-run, self-financing business. Her haute couture creations embody a wide range of identities and sell particularly well in Japan and the Middle East. I got my passion for creating clothes designs at an early age. When I was 14, I was a punk. I realized that you could express who you were and how you felt through the clothes you wore. More than being something pretty or glitzy, there was something very profound about clothing, something that concerned your identity, a real process of introspection. I found it all so powerful and it immediately fell into place. After her childhood in Marseille, Sakina moved to Bagnolet near Paris. In her fashion shows, she would use the local girls as models. All sizes, ages and origins were welcome. Her show at the latest Fashion Week in Paris proves that she is determined to maintain her policy of diversity. My models have always been women who are part of my, dare I say, social fabric. For my first show in Paris, I used the women who live next door to me. One thing about being African is that knowledge is passed from generation to generation. That's because our grandparents live with us rather than in retirement homes. When I came here, I decided to go and see the old people and share my trade with them. At the same time, I also took a lot back, so they were in my show as well. Her attachment to her origins led her to use a very particular technique. She buries cloth in the ground in places with a rich history. When I ran around too much, my grandmother would say, Stop! You'll hurt the stones! You'll hurt the earth! This is a part of the animist approach to our environment. We're not alone. We're living on a planet with other people. Burying my material in the ground was my way of asking the earth's permission to create. Questions of memory and uniqueness run throughout Sakina's work. Her African origins are evident in her luminous, ample and flowing cotton designs. Sakina's clothing is marked by her economic and imaginative way of using the same volume of material. The wearer interprets a host of influences, taking their inspiration from the whole world, free from codes and trends. I'm inspired by people. I do fashion designs for human beings, to be human. A face, a certain look, hands, they all say so much. I think that I travel through other people's eyes and the way they see things. Her creativity is based on human interaction. Each week, Sakina forges her technique in the many workshops she attends. This one is run by the Emmaus Association in the Parisian suburbs. Here, unemployed women learn to sew, repair and recycle clothes, reinventing themselves without worrying about preconceived ideas. Here, you learn to tell your own story. Our monitor gave us the idea of picking out whatever colors we wanted and putting them all together. The others did tops, so I decided to make trousers. I'd never even used a needle before coming here. I couldn't even take in a pair of trousers. 
Now I think I'd be able to take my jeans apart and reassemble them by myself. Thanks to them, I find time in my hectic schedule to leave a couple of hours free when I learn something as well as passing something on. I can fine-tune my craft. Thanks to all these workshops over a decade or so, we're now able to make clothes using our own techniques. You can see that she has an African feel. It's very beautiful. A trouser skirt. It looks like a skirt, but it is also a pair of trousers. An inimitable touch, artly weaving together past and present, Africa and the West. I worked with my history, my cultural reference points and origins. I didn't go against it. I went with it and I got back 300%. 300%.